भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर फोर्टीन वर्स थर्टी वन सुषेण सेन सांबो जांबवती सूत अन्े च काश्मीर प्रवरा सपुत्रा ऋषिबाद Hare Krishna our older chieftain sons of Lord Krishna such as Susena Chirudesana Samba the son of Jambavanti and Visapa along with their sons all doing well verses 32 and 33 together tathaivanu charaha shaureha shrut deva uddvadah sunanda nanda shirshanyaye चान्ये सात्वर्ष बाह अपिस्वस्ते सर्वे राम कृष्ण भुजाश्रय अमरती कुशल स्माक बद्धसौरदहासो श्रुतदेव उद्धव एंड अदर्स नंदा सुनंदा एंड अदर लीडर्स ऑफ रिबरेटेड सोल्स हू आर कॉन्स्टंट कंपानियंस ऑफ द लोड are protected by lord balrama and krishna are they all doing well in their respective functions do they who are all eternally bound in friendship with us remember our welfare verse 34 bhagwan api govindo brahmanyo bhakta vatsalah kachit pure sudarmayam sukhmaste rud suradah vrutah Is Lord Krishna the supreme personality of Godhead, who gives pleasures to the cows, the senses, and the brahmanas, who is very affectionate towards his devotees, mm-hmm. enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarka Puri, surrounded by friends? Verses thirty-five, thirty-six together. Mangalaya cha loka nam, Shremaya cha bhavaya cha, Aste yadu kulam bodava. आद्यो नंत सकुमा यदवो रचिता पीड़ती परमानंद महापौरुषिका इव दि ओरिजिनल पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड दि एंजोय एंड बलराम दि प्राइमेवल लोड अनंत आ स्टेइंग इन द ओशन ऑफ दि यादव डिनेस्टी फॉर द वेलफेयर protection and general progress of the entire universe and the members of the yadu dynasty being protected by the arms of the lord are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky text 37 yat pad sushrushana mukhya karmana satyadayo dvista sahastra yoshitah nirjitya sankhye tridashan sada shisho simply by administering comforts at the lotus feet of the lord which is the most important of all services the queens of dwarika headed by satyabama induced the lord to conquer the demigods thus the queens enjoy things which are prerogatives of the wives of the controller of thunderbolts was 38 ोज ऑफ दादु डिनेस्टी बींग प्रोटेक्टेड बाय आर्म्स ऑफ द लोड कृष्ण ऑलवेज रिमेन फेयरलेस इन एवरी रिस्पेक्ट एंड देर फोर देर फीट ट्रम्पल ओवर द सुधर्म असेंबली हाउस विच द बेस्ट डेमी गोड्स डिजर्व बट विच वॉज टेकन अवे फ्रॉम दैम वर्स थर्टी नाइन कच्चिते नाम यम तात भ्रष्ट तेजा विभासि में अलब्धमानो वग्नात My brother Arjuna, 
please tell me whether your health is all right. You appear to have lost your bodily luster. Is this due to the others disrespecting and neglecting you because of your long stay at Dwarika? Verse 40. Kachina nabi, kachina nabi hato bhavaihi, shabdadi bir mangalaihi, nadattam uktam abir artibya ashaya yat pratishrutam. We've already done Gorarati, right? Has someone addressed you with unfriendly words or threatened you? Could you not give charity to one who asked, or could you not keep your promise to someone? Verse 41. Kachit tvam brahmanam balam gama buddham roginam striyam sharano prasutam sattvam natyakshi sharana pradaha you are always the protector of the deserving living beings, such as the brahmanas, children, cows, women, and the diseased. Could you not give them protection when they approached you for shelter? Verse 42. Kachit tvam nagamo gamyam, gamyam vasata krutam sriyam, parajito vata bhavan, nauta maira, have you contacted a woman of impeachable character or have you not properly treated a deserving woman or have you been defeated on the way by someone who is inferior or equal to you? Verse 43. Api svita purya bhunkantha stavam sambo jana vruddha balakan jugupsitam karma kinchita have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meals alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Sorry. Verse 44. Kachit prestatame natha radaye natma banduna. Shunyo asmi rahito nityam manyase te anyatana ruka. Or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna? Oh, my brother Arjuna, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Please forgive my mistakes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Just listen to the sound check quickly. Everyone can hear me. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare so Krishna. thank you again for inviting me for today's evening chat. Our chapter day of the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you so much for the recitation done by by devotees, much appreciated. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to explain my situation at the moment. We are in Nottingham and traveling Sankirtan, and I believe today was a session supposedly been done by Divyanam Prabhu, but he um, requested me to kind of a cover for him at this point. So I'm, because we had a whole day of book distribution today behind us, and the sun was really like piping hot. I'm kind of a tired bit and reduced, so we're going to make it nice and sweet and quick. So with that, with the permission of the Vaishnavas, we're going to go further. Um, I would like to also request the blessings of the devotees to allow me to speak something of um, something of practical, something which you can utilize in your preaching, and something which uh, is in accordance to the vision of the Acharyas. So today we're going to be discussing from the 14th chapter, uh, and this is verse number 37. Let me just share. 
the screen with you. Okay. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see it. So today is the first verse, the two verses to cover 37 and 38. So this is the continuation of presentation by Yudhishthi Maharaj, which started at on the verse 25 and onwards. We can see how Yudhishthi Maharaj was um, inquiring from Arjuna when he came very upset from the Dvaraka and he kind of uh, been presenting the message about the departure of Krishna and the, and the Yadu dynasty. Yudhishthir Maharaj is one verse by verse inquiring about different closest circle around Krishna, different like Vishni families. Uh, he was inquiring about Prajumna, Akrura, Jaranta, Gada, and so on, until he comes to the very intimate section. And this intimate section is dealing particularly about with the with the wives of Krishna. So verse 37 is saying, simply by administering comfort to the lotus feet of the Lord, which is the most important of all services, that the queens of Dwarka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. Thus the queens enjoy things which are prerogatives of the wise from the controller of thunderbolts. So this is a very interesting section where we can see that how Krishna had almost, you can say, multiple lives. One of the lives of Krishna is taking place in Vrindavan when he's taking position of a cowherd boy, which is his natural sort of a, like a constitution, Rajanandana Krishna. Here in this section, because King, King Yudhishthir, King Yudhishthir is uh, very much tightly close and connected with the whole Yadava dynasty, with the whole Yadava dynasty in Dvaraka, he's inquiring about the kingly order or kingly lifestyle of Krishna. And here we can see how it is interesting by simply by administering comfort to the lotus field of the Lord, which is the most important of all services, the queens of Dvaraka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. So one of the features of Krishna is that he's obviously he's the supreme and he's unconquerable. He's not someone who can be easily manipulated. He's not someone who can be easily sort of a directed and redirected like a like a pet husband. But here we can see that the Supreme Lord reacts to the inquiries and to the needs and desires of, of his queens. So Let's just introduce a different layer of this uh, of this interaction. Let's just introduce a different layer to understand the interaction between the queens of Dwaraka and Krishna himself, specifically Satyabhama. So in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, there's this very beautiful section which, which is presenting Krishna as a as a person as a person who's still longing for the grooves, pleasure grooves of Vrindavan. Obviously, that was kind of like a constant meditation, even when he was a Vasudev Krishna in Dvarka with all that opulence and Aishvari above. So, Krishna fell sick. Most of you know the pastime. Krishna fell sick and uh, he was one of the re one of all the ministers and all the family members of the Yadu clan they kind of, and Vrishnis, they came together and how is this possible that Krishna is sick? And only Satyabhama was the one, she said, she was basically really direct. She's one of the very feisty, feisty queens of Dvaraka. And um, she said that Krishna is not sick. He is lamenting and hankering from the land of Vrindavan. And she, she said that in her sleep, in the sleep, Krishna was speaking the different names of the gopis, especially this one very, very special gopi, Radharani. And in this dream, Krishna was constantly narrating and lamenting for the pleasure grows of Vrindavan. So Satyabhama starts shouting, and she was saying, he's not sick. He just wants to go back to Vrindavan, where he was treated as a cowherd boy, where, where the sand is more dear to him than these palaces of Varaka. He's He's more the 
different opulent presentation of offerings in Dvaraka is not enough. But Krishna is hankering for simple butter and milk and cream. So Satyabhama was one of the queens. She said always the things as they are. So, but even that, because these are not, not like some normal devotees. These are special Shakti Tattvas. And one of the main feature of the Shakti Tattva is to always facilitate the pastimes of the Lord. Therefore, even this sort of a feisty mood of fighting and this stubbornness presentation of Satyabhama, this bring this sort of a even deeper meditation of Vasudev Krishna on Vrindavan. So when we, what does he mean that if here he says that the queens of Dvaraka headed by Satyabhama induced the Lord to conquer the demigods, the pure devotees, they will always do something which they know that the Lord is internally desiring. Or the pure devotees of the Lord, or pure shaktis of the Lord, like Satyabhama, which is uh, <clears throat> the Bhu Shakti, the, the earthly energy. It is said the Bhumi Devi is the incarnation or expansion of Satyabhama. They always do something which brings uh, greater pleasure or understood the duty and the mission of the Lord. So when we see that they induced him to conquer the demigods, it's not that this was not in the checklist or desire list of, of Krishna. This was definitely one of the checkpoints that Krishna wanted to establish. So you see, sometimes the demigods, um, they are devotees. They are devoted to the Lord and they are devoted to the, uh, let's say, this hierarchical establishment, this dharma, mm -hmm. or the demigods is to facilitate the universal sort of uh, functionings. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they get sometimes... Uh, how do you say, covered by the opulence. Therefore, the Lord now and then comes and sort of established his superiority. We can see varieties of pastimes where Krishna had an uh, in in interesting relationship with Indradev, with Varuna, with Varunadev, with um, with Vayu, with uh, different demigods to say that, look, I'm the supreme personality of God. So, when these Shakti Tattvas and like these queens headed by Satyabhama try to induce the Lord to control uh, to conquer the demigods, this was actually one of the missions of the Lord to establish that He is the supreme personality of God. So, same thing done by King Yudhishthir. So, when there was a, a Raja Suya, Raja Suya sacrifice on the on the coronation of King Yudhishthir, King Yudhishthir as a as a crown jewel of that particular ceremony was to worship first person, which is the most worthy of worship amongst that assembly. And what he did, he inaugurated Krishna as the most worshipable personality. This just shows that all these machinations of these individual devotees are ultimately to establish Krishna as the Supreme. So this is uh, this is the correct way to actually understand. Not that Krishna is some um, pet husband of these great queens of Dwaraka, Rather, the queens of Dwarka, they facilitate by some inducement or some sort of a seeming machinations that Krishna is established as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here Prabhupada writes, Satyabhama instigated her husband to get the Parijata flower from the heavenly planets. And the Lord got it even by force from the demigods. As a common husband secures things to please his wife. As already explained, the Lord had very little to do with so many wives wives to carry out their orders like an ordinary man, like an ordinary man. But because of the intensity of the devotion of these queens of Dvaraka, uh, Krishna took the position to facilitate the dharma and establishing his superiority and same time pleasing, same time pleasing um, these, these wives of Krishna. We can move on to another verse. And this one, this verse is very interesting. Verse 38. Translation for Shla Prabhupada. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of Lord Sri Krishna, always remain fearless in every respect, and therefore their feet trample over the Sudharma assembly house, which the best demigods deserve, but which was taken away from them. So, as I mentioned previously, there's almost like two angles um, to this specific two verses section. The angle number one is that the queens of Dwaraka, as I mentioned, try to facilitate the duty or the desire and the establishing of superiority 
of Krishna. But here, the great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, they establishing the Dharma from the perspective of a devotee. They establishing that after you becoming, uh, after you becoming surrendered soul to Krishna, you become abhayam or fearless. So here, in one sense, the duty bound or the love bound, bhakti bound, um, queens of Dwarka try to establish the superiority of Krishna from this angle. The Yadavas are establishing the practice, the superior practice of Krishna consciousness by them being directly connected to Krishna. One of the inherit or sort of a in received qualities of a pure devotee is fearlessness. So, and because these Yadavas, these Yadu dynasty being Kshatriyas, their fearless nature came in the form of a battle. So they be not afraid to go into celestial regions and steal the Sudharma assembly house, which is said that whoever enters it, there was uh, no Kala Chakra can touch that person, which means he was not aging, he never felt sick, and there was no uh, Kleshas. There's no Adhyatmika, Adhidevika, and Adhibotika present in this Sudharma assembly house. One interesting side note on the on the Yadus. Later on, in the disappearance of the Yadava clan and the Vrishnis on the Prabhasa, when they kind of uh, slaughtered themselves completely, was that Krishna was actually thinking, and I think this is commentary by Baladavidya Bhushan saying that um it's actually good that the is good that the Vrishnis uh disappeared sooner than than um, than Krishna. And the reason for this is that if Krishna will disappear first and the Vrishnis, the Vrishnis will be like mad elephants. And what mad elephants do? They stample all over everything. They destroy everything they, they see. Because they're so powerful and unstoppable, they will conquer the whole three planetary system, the universe, become again a big burden. Because they will go mad after disappearance of Krishna. Therefore, the Acharyas are commenting that that's why they have to kill themselves first or destroy the Vrishni and the Yadu dynasty, and then Krishna will disappear, saying, kind of knowing that, okay, I've done everything, Vrishnis are gone, Yadavas are gone, now I can sort of uh, withdraw my earthly pastimes. So this just shows that, and what does it mean for us as a practicing devotees? It means that we are always... Um, we should be always fearless because we are protected by the chakra, by the celestial weapon and personal weapon of the Lord, which is said in um, it is either this is Chaitanya Bhagavat or uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati's Chaitanya Chaitanya Chandramrita, which actually explains that you can see it, you can't see it, but there is a chakra hovering over the heads of the Vaishnavas, of the devotees, and they are always protected by the Lord. But their form of protection is that our form of fighting is putting ourselves in the situations where, where we can preach, where we can preach Krishna consciousness and be bold in the service of the Supreme Lord. So there's some interesting points mentioned here by Prabhupada. Um, they were able to use such force because they were certain of the indulgence and protection of the Supreme Lord Krishna. In other words, the Lord is provided with the best things in the universe by his pure devotees. Lord Krishna was provided with all kinds of comforts and facilities available within the universe by the members of the Yadu dynasty. And in return, such servitors of the Lord were protected and fearless. So this is again, it brings that the, as I said, again, the unique feature of the wives of Krishna was that they desired something seemingly for them, but ultimately was it for Krishna's pleasure. And the strength of the Yadava clan is that when they desired something and conquered, ultimately was not for their sense gratification, but for facilitation of the Lord. So if you wish to indulge, and if you wish to receive a provision from the lord you need to first have the clarity in your head and in your mind for whose enjoyment this is right so if you just put yourself in a position where you can be mocked and robbed 
just saying that, oh, I'm the devotee of the Supreme Lord. And for no particular reason, for nothing, no connection with the Lord service, then most likely he will not indulge in, in sort of a, or Krishna will not give that full on protection. But if you put yourself in a situation for Krishna's service, then we will receive that protection. So again, Krishna works in a very subtle way, in a very subtle realm. And um, this subtle realm is proportionally proportionally working based on your desires to connect yourself with Krishna. So Prabhupada says, Fe fearfulness is sort of illusion for the living being when he is in slumber and forgetting his eternal relation with the Lord. Since the living being is never to die by his constitution, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita 220, then what is the cause of fearfulness? A person may be fearful of a tiger in a dream, but another man who is awake by his side sees no tiger here. So yeah, that's some of the interesting points mentioned here, that ultimately whatever we perform should be connected directly to the service of the Supreme Lord. And in this way, we can... Uh, we can be engaged in very pure, a very direct uh, service to the, to Krishna. And whatever desires we have, if they're connected with satisfying the desires of the Lord, then we receive boons like direct reciprocation with the Lord, direct protection from the Lord. And our glory will be glory of being connected with Krishna. So one of the few points which I wanted to mention, if there are any points, questions, uh, you can send me a personal message. We can clarify that. If the devotees wish to share anything, please do so now. Otherwise, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Any points, dear devotees? Any questions? Hare Krishna, Antaranga Prabhu. Please accept. Thank you for wonderful points you made. Um, that's why I just thought, just you mentioned that, you know, whenever we do things, um, if anything, you know, uh, what you call um, anything uh, which is not favorable to us, uh, we would definitely know that, you know, I didn't do it for Krishna. That's why the results have come this way. So that's why we need to be Krishna conscious always. Whatever we do, we need to do it for Krishna. Then only, you know, Krishna will um, uh, intervene and will help us to, you know, do whatever he wanted for to to to, to serve Krishna in that way. So that's uh, I just thought that that was a very wonderful message you gave. So it it helped us with the consciousness. Whatever we do, we must always think of Krishna and do it in that way so that Krishna is pleased. Mm. Yes. It's a it's a very sort of a it's a very interesting kind of a concept. It's a very very highly elevated concept to to meditate on. But mm -hmm. ultimately we should always keep ourselves reminding ourselves what is the goal of Krishna consciousness. That whatever austerities we perform, whatever we eat whatever we think, whatever activities we do, it should be directly connected to Krishna. And ultimately, that's what in the end of our lives allows us to meditate and focus our mind on Krishna and leave the world in the auspicious way, in the correct way, in the spiritual way. So just like the Yadavas being offering the strength of arms, and, uh, and in this way they've been trying to facilitate in Krishna's pleasure and Krishna's glories. Mm -hmm. Gopis done it differently. Mother Yashoda did it differently. Balaram did it differently. Uh, the Gopas, the cows, the trees, the the vines, the tree, the 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 grass, the bumblebees, the flowers, the garlands, the Golokadan, the Vaikuntha itself. All the different individual personalities did it differently, and Krishna reciprocated accordingly. So it just shows that Krishna is Akila Rasa Mrita Sindhu. He is the source of all all mellows, all rasas. So our duty is to somehow find out what is our rasa and what is our relationship with Krishna and offer it in the best way possible. Thank you. Very nice class.
Also, I'm sure you are you are blissful over there where you do, where you are distributing your books, and we are very good at it. I'm sure you got you have distributed many many books so far. We are in Nottingham at the moment, um, and we have. Is, is it favorable? Is it? Uh... Yeah, Nottingham is far out. It's just amazing. Like a lot of people, big city, uh, constant flow. A lot of youngsters. A lot of universities here, um, and yeah, we've done a lot of books today. And um, it was very nice, very nice. Basically, we try to connect ourselves more with the festival team. Mm. Ruvana Prabhu had these series of festivals. So now we're helping. So we stay, let's say, two weeks in a place, do book distribution, inviting people, developing relationships, and invite them for a particular for a festival and mm. just go there, connect with them more, and develop, you know, deeper sort of a affections with the with the people invite them to uh to the manor and uh, just somehow or another help people to come on a journey that's that's the important thing wonderful you are doing very well wonderful thank you so much Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. any other points dear devotees reflections you've been going through this section for some time um anything which is interesting anything you wish to share or ask? No? Okay. So um, if there are no other questions, uh, with your kind permission, I'm going to make this one slightly shorter. Um, so I would like to request your permission to leave slightly earlier. And I uh, hope that's okay. Otherwise, I'm wishing you all the best. Today is Wednesday for the rest of your week. And uh, please find some nectar in Shima Bhagavatam. Engage yourself. Most importantly, the good thing is that my Guru Maharaj was always meditating. His own is Kadamakanan Maharaj. What is the practicality of this particular verse? What is the practical Krishna conscious Iskon devotee way to incorporate this in our life? or how we can see this in our life. So please meditate in such a way on pages of Bhagavatam and it becomes it becomes a companion, it becomes a part of your life. It com becomes not only a book, but it becomes a living, breathing Krishna in your home, in your mind, in your consciousness, and in your heart. So again, thank you so much for a kind time. I'm wishing you all the best. Mancha kalpa to repascha kripa. Patitana Bhavine Bio Vaishnava. Bio Vaishnava Bio Namu Namaha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.